one of the most beautiful landscapes in Ethiopia. The astonishing ground water forest, the eye-catching spring waters, the great bridge of gold, Nechsar National Park. Here are the majestic Amaro Mountains, magnificent Abaya and Jamo Lakes, giant Nile crocodiles and amazing wildlife. These are the wonders of Nechsar National Park. This majestic natural beauty, known as Nechsar National Park, is located in the Great Rift Valley of South Ethiopia. It is situated on 514 km square, and of which 85% is a land and the rest is a water body. Arbamj town, one of the major tourist destinations in the southern state and the seat of Gamogofa Zone administration, is the nearest town to the park. Now I am in Arbamj town of southern state, which is about 505 kilometers from the capital Addis Ababa. This is where I enter to join Najsar National Park. By the way, Najsar means in Amharic a white grass. So let's go to see Najsar National Park for a more closer look. Nechsar National Park was established in 1974 to protect swine heart beast and other wildlife species in the surrounding area. Since then, it has been serving as one of the most spectacular natural tourist destinations in Ethiopia. No matter how it is relatively far from Addis Ababa, Nechsar National Park is easily accessible by air. Ethiopian airlines have two days flight every week from Addis Ababa to Arbamij with its world-class quality service. There is also high-quality asphalt road from Addis Ababa to Arbamij, which is another alternative means in accommodating the tourist flow to the park. As you enter Najsar National Park, your eyes are bewildered by diverse vegetations from savanna to acacia woodland, from bush to dense forest. The astonishing song of different bird species from this diverse vegetation has magical power, leaving visitors amazed. At the heart of Najsar National Park, there are two spectacular natural lakes, Abaya to the north and Jamo to the south. Around 15% of the park is a water segment, mostly Abaya and Jamo lakes. Lake Jamo has blue water with white sands, while Lake Abaya holds murky brown water. Both Abaya and Jamo lakes are home to different species of fish, hippopotamus and crocodiles. In comparison, Lake Jam was a smaller one, 26 kilometers long and 22 kilometers wide with a surface area of 551 square kilometers. It has a maximum depth of 10 meters. The northern end of Lake Jamo sited in the Najsar National Park. Kulufo River and other small streams empty to the lake. This is Lake Abaya, the largest and the longest rift valley lake in Ethiopia. It is 60 kilometers long and 20 kilometers wide with a surface area of 1,162 square kilometers. Its maximum depth is around 13.1 meters. The town of Arbamij is situated on the southwestern margin of Lake Abaya and the southern shoreline of the lake is part of Nechsar National Park. Like Lake Chamo, this lake is also surrounded by savanna plains and mountains which are famous for its wild mammals and bird life. Both Abaya and Chamo lakes are very essential for the local communities. The cattle of farmers drink water from these lakes. Thousands of people also manage their life by fishing on Lake Abaya and Chamo. Well, actually, as far as the advantage obtained from this lake is concerned, we have got a fisher association which contains about 300 members. And these people are legally organized uh, before 30 or 40 years. And these people are really making their living from this lake, and uh, these are the first group of the, the beneficiaries. Abaya and Chamo lakes are separated by
by a narrow piece of land known as Bridge of God. This small land which is situated between the two Ethiopian Rift Valley lakes is only 800 meters long. It is one of the most beautiful places in Natchitar National Park. Over the past three decades, probably thousands of local and international tourists have visited the place. Uh, Natchitar National Park is the second stellar revenue collectors of the, the, national, the other national parks. The next one from the Seven Mountain National Park is in the National Park. It's collected yearly one million something members, one million, above one million members, and to visit uh, more than 20,000 tourists. This is another habitat in Natchitar National Park, the Savanna Plains. It is a dominant feature of the park and its soil is black clay. Making the chains of Amaro Mountains as a background, these plains look magnificent for nature-loving individuals. From a distance, the massive plains of this park look light, which become a direct cause for the name Natchar or white grass. The eastern shores of Abaya and Jamo lakes has a very vast plain land. It covered around 10,000 hectares of land, as it is covered by acacia woodland and a light grass, which is locally called Natchar. It is a habitat to gazelle, swine heartbeat, and zebra. Zebra is a very unique mammal in this natural national park. Natural National Park is home to various wildlife, including Burchale zebra, swine heartbeat, greater kudu, grand gazelle, dick dick, anabis baboons, and much more. The park is also home to many bird species including white-tailed lark, the endemic Natchar nightjar, cory bastard and others. These incredible wild and bird life species have been amazing local and international tourists for more than three decades. It is unlikely for tourists to forget what they have experienced in Natchar National Park. My name is Michaela Venterova and I come from Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Yeah. Good. How do you find Natchar National Park? It's very beautiful. It's quite large and lots of animals we met. Uh, what kind of animal species do you find well, in Natchar? Well, most uh, we saw zebras and antelopes and some birds, very beautiful birds, really very careful. What is the new experience you have in this park? Well, it's the experience with wild animals. You can see it like in the nature. It's, we are there very close. What kind of animals you find in this park? We saw it here, zebras, the pigs, uh, the antelopes, uh, the grand zebras, uh, the grand, the grand antelopes, and we saw it as well, some eagles as well. Ciao, bye, Nancy. We love a In Natchar National Park, it is a very common to see large herds of Burchale zebra. Despite the number is better than other types of wildlife in the park, the Burchale zebra we saw are rarest species of zebra, just classified as endangered. With their black and white strips, they give a special grace to the Natchar National Park. They mostly live in areas where acacia and shrubs are available, so that to graze grass, shrub, and sometimes vegetables. The rainy season is the most suitable time for the Burchale zebras to give birth for new baby four because it is the season when new grass start to grow in a large quantity. Their social organization is another amazing thing. Mostly they form a group following their family line. The other group they form is a single group which comprises 2 to 15 Burchale zebra on average and it is very stable. The Sarah Park National Park which is the combination of uh, smallest and largest mammals. From the largest mammals, example, the Borchale zebras, to my, the large amount of mammals, about 3,500 something, and the greater, and the next one, the greater kudu, the lesion kudu, and the human heart But uh, I don't know the effect, don't know the uh, exact numbers of the animals, but the estimation is uh, the zebras 3,500, the greater kudu. 500 and the uh, gazelles 600 and this thing. Occasionally, finding endemic wildlife of the park is the hardest thing. It needs patience and sometimes a good luck. Maybe one has to camp in the park for more than a day to see them with significant number. 
Late afternoon and early morning is a perfect moment to observe various animals and birds species in the park. Well, this is Thursday morning of April 14, 2011, my fourth day in Natchezar National Park. In this morning, I have witnessed greater kudu, swine heart beast, some type of bird species, zebras, and much more. Greater Kudu is another wildlife wolf of the Natchezar National Park. It is a herbivorous mammal species, most often live in a forest and bushland. Mostly they live in water accessible area. The park has also another amazing wildlife species. It is a sanctuary for swine heart beast which is endemic to Ethiopia. The total population of swine heart beast probably does not exceed 20 in the park. According to sources, it is more endangered than the Ethiopian wolf species. I'm going to have a boat trip on Lake Jamo to see the Nile crocodile market. As a first visitor, I am really eager to see how it looks from more closer. For sure, it will be one of the most exciting moments in my lifetime. But before that, I have to check my pocket to make sure whether I can afford it or not. Yes, the price for my boat trip is relatively reasonable and I have started my journey on Lake Chamo that may take about two hours. But I am a little bit scared because it is my first trip on boat. I came across some visiting tourists from England heading to the giant Nile crocodiles market. I don't know what they are expecting at the site, but they look excited at what they are looking from a distance. By the way, the name crocodile market is derived from the flow of giant Nile crocodiles in one place which looks Ethiopian traditional market. Here are the giant Nile crocodiles. Some are in the water and others are on the beach of lake. They are basking on the sun. It is really a wonderful natural drama. The crocodiles open their mouths and the birds pick the food remains left in the teeth of the crocodiles. Lake Jamo is a unique site where the giant Nile crocodiles along with herds of hippopotamus are found. Some giant Nile crocodiles are about 7 meters long from its snout to the tip of its tail. This Nile crocodile market is for sure unforgettable once visited. Spectacular. Uh, we, we didn't really know what to expect. We knew that there were crocodiles and hippos here, but uh, we've never seen so many and they were so close. Such magnificent animals being left in peace and having a nice sleep as they were today. I think it's absolutely wonderful. I didn't know what to expect, but I think it's just the natural beauty of it and the animals, the crocodiles and the hippos are spectacular. I saw you while you are visiting the crocodile and again the hippos market. How, how much that is strange for you? Very strange for me. I only normally see hippos and crocodiles in zoos in England. So, and to see that many, I've never seen that many all in one place before. Just occasionally in other countries I've just seen one in the water, but to see them out of the water is spectacular. What is the new experience you have in this national park that you never see anywhere else maybe? I think to get so close to what we think are very dangerous animals, uh, such large and, and wonderful animals which elsewhere in the wild find it very hard to survive because they are large and in competition with man. Here they don't seem to be in competition so they seem to be left in peace and that was wonderful to see. I think similar to what my husband said, that um, to see so much just left alone to nature with very, um, there's just a few boats here, there's not a lot of people or buildings, so the animals are left alone to be themselves and I think that is a new experience. <laughs> These are the 40 springs in Natchezar National Park. Of course, there are more than 100, no matter how the local people traditionally estimated them to be 14. 
These springs are source of drinking water for the residents of Arbamit town and the surrounding areas. They spring out from the foothills of Arbamit town. The town is named after these 40 springs. My name is Atif and I'm coming from Saudi Arabia. Um, how do you find the 40 springs in this area? Well, uh, it is very interesting because the name Arba is an Arabic word also, so I was wondering how, how come this name? They told me this is the name of the number of springs. This is why I came to, to see, and they show me these uh, 40 springs. There are more than 40, I think, but uh, maybe just to say too much water, they say Arbamin. These spectacular springs are one of the highly visited places in Natchar National Park. Mariana and Theodros are from England. They came here to refresh with bounty natural beauty of the 40 springs. Tell me your name and of the country you came from. Uh, my name is Mariana and I come from England. Uh, Mariana, how long do you stay here? Um, about three weeks. Very good. How do you find the Nechasar National Park in Ethiopia? Very, very beautiful. Uh, today is my first day coming here, but um, when we were driving through the trees and the forest just looked so ancient and old and there was all the vines hanging down and I was going, wow, it's amazing. And I saw the baboons everywhere. It was very beautiful. I mean, what features of this park? I missed you very much. Um, the spring. <laughs> the spring water. Yeah, um, <clears throat> because when it's hot, it's really nice to jump in. <laughs> and there's lots of fishes everywhere. And it's really nicely taken care of. And yeah, it's very pretty. I always knew what it was like because my dad is from here, my father. So I grew up with stories and pictures. And so I came to see. I came to see Dese, to see my, where my father was from, but then my friend's from Ardwaninj, so I came here, and I liked it, so I never went to Dese, I just stayed here. In Nechsar National Park, there is also unusual evergreen groundwater forest. This dense forest supports an exceptionally diverse range of species. Some of the three species are estimated to be around 30 meters tall. The forest is said to be unique in Africa and its existence is closely associated to the series of freshwater springs which originate from the western margin of the forest. The forest is rich in harboring diverse species including Anabis baboons and Colobus monkey. Ethiopia is a country with long history culture and tradition as well as amazing natural beauty. However, many outsiders perceive the country as a land of poverty, war and deadly disease. It may be the impact of biased western media reporting. After visiting Natchar National Park in particular and the country in general, some tourists are surprised about Ethiopia's natural beauties and development efforts. I think uh, I knew it was a very interesting and fascinating country, but we've been here perhaps 10 days, and I think every day has been different. We've seen so many different things, so many different aspects of Ethiopian culture, history, uh, natural beauty, landscape, animals. You're a very, very rich country is what I think. Going back to their respective country, these tourists have something to tell to their family friends and larger community about the wonders of Natchar National Park in particular and Ethiopia in general. I always tell them and encourage them to come over because I'm now coming here also to, to create uh, an investment here in this country. This is how much I trust this place and I am interested in it so I'm coming to, to make an investment here. Uh, I am going to bring my, my family for a summer vacation after the school close to visit this country and see the different interesting places. A lot of interesting places. 
I have seen some areas I have driven yesterday about 150 kilometers from here. The scenery was out of this world. It's, it's so beautiful and so peaceful. You cannot experience it by a picture. You have to, to live it to, to really enjoy it. Arbaminch has many high standard hotels and lodges that can accommodate tourists. Situated in a very strategic place, Paradise Lodge offers many high standard services. At the lodge, you have a beautiful panoramic view of a Bahian Jamu Lakes. Well, actually, we are a four star hotel, well, lodge. We give international service to the tourists. Nevertheless, the existence of the park is the main key. Without the existence of the park, Nechisar National Park, our service wouldn't mean nothing. Illegal cutting down of trees for firewood, fishing, human settlement and cattle grazing are the main challenges for Nechisar National Park. While we were in the park, we have witnessed cattle grazing in a large number. To my surprise, the cattle were seen while grazing with Burchale zebras in the park. This might lead to unforeseen consequences on the rare and endangered wildlife of the park through communicable diseases. This beautiful park is suffering different problems as I stated earlier. One is uh, illegal poachers are here within the park, illegal settlers are here within the park, and uh, even to the extent that some of the illegal settlers in the park are killing the very endemic animal, which is swine serpent beast, which is very rare in the face of the world and now almost it's available in Ethiopia and in a very few countries in the world. And uh, this uh, animal is available here and now it's endangered also here in this park because the people who are illegally within the park are poaching and at the same time the rest of the other animals in the park are also suffering because a large group of over hundreds of thousands of uh, Domestic animals are almost late in the park and these are overgrazing and therefore most of the animals in this particular park are really running in short of food and almost they are uh, starving, I can say. According to the officials, several attempts have been undertaken to solve the problems. Among others, sufficient agricultural and pasture land were given to Guji Oromos and the Korean nationality of southern state outside the park. It was an unfortunate attempt. The farmers returned to the park and the actions to convince them are continued at different levels. As a department, what we have to do is uh, we have to create awareness among the community so as to protect the park, just to keep its beauty as it is. So our mandate is also teaching people to take care of the park and uh, that, that we are doing our, jo our duties, our responsibilities, we are doing beautifully well. But Sometimes uh, the conditions which are happening in the park are beyond our capacity. Sometimes it needs a uh, decision of higher level authorities and therefore uh, at, at the level of zonal uh, level, really the zonal government is doing its, top, its, uh, its most top effort. In order to control the illegal settlement, we, we have just a meeting with the Romia region in the, the Purena zone in order to just you know, excavate from the illegally settled area from the park and continuously just we negotiate with them in order to just uh, pull out from the park. Natsar National Park is really a true wonder. Natural lakes, diverse vegetations, unusual evergreen groundwater forest, natural springs, skyrocketing chains of mountains and amazing wildlife and bird life are unforgettable memories once visited. No matter how the future of this park is uncertain, it remains as one of the most spectacular tourist destinations in Ethiopia.